Joining me is the country's top foreign affairs writer, Greg Sheridan of The Australian. Greg, uh, thanks for your time. Uh, Penny Wong's speech outlining her approach to foreign policy, specifically China. Uh, your take on it? Well, Andrew, I thought it was a very good speech. Uh, typical Penny Wong speech. Uh, very sober, very well thought out. No Churchillian flights of rhetoric, but uh, very solid, clear lucid uh you know she she makes a speech like a really good carpenter makes a table it's sturdy it's upright <laughs> it does its job um she made it very clear that uh deterrence is necessary to preserve the peace uh, she made it very clear she's very explicit china's military build-up is a big problem for nations in the region we've all got to work, work together uh, now, there are one or two things I might have said a little differently. It was a Labor Party speech, after all. But one of the nice elements, really, well, I think one of the funniest, cleverest elements was she hailed our greatest statesmen as Doc Evatt, John Curtin and Gough Whitlam. Now, I would certainly cavil at Gough Whitlam and even Doc Evatt, but, <laughs> but that's by the by. What I think drove Keating mad was that she left out Hawke and Keating. I think she put a, should have put Hawke in and left out Keating. That would have been even more pointed. <laughs> I think even more than, you know, disparaging him in the question time was just leaving him out altogether. I mean, that guy has a serious uh, psychotic relevance deprivation problem. He thinks he's, you know, he's... he's Keating's view of the world is like Spike Milligan's memoir. You know, Hitler, my part in his downfall. He thinks he's central to everything and he, he can't bear that, um, that Labor has moved on from him. It's strange, isn't it? Like, I don't get it. He swears that uh, he no longer gets a salary from uh, the Chinese uh, communist regime. He did, And when he did, it was only a small one when he was uh, on the board of a uh, China investment bank. But... I don't get this absolutely pathological siding with China against the United States. Uh, you'll ne almost never hear him say a word of criticism of China, but boy, the list of uh, criticism of the US is just endless. Uh, Penny Wong addressed that. What do you make of Paul Keating's reaction there? Well, he's terribly thin-skinned. I mean, he's a very sad person, Paul Keating. He's bitter. He's hypersensitive. He can't bear the fact that he lost to John Howard, whom he thinks is an inferior person. He can't bear that Anthony Albanese and Penny Wong and Richard Miles, none of them whom he thinks hold a candle to him intellectually, are so successful. I would like him to tell us what the total list of all the business interests he ever had in China were. I can believe he got a small salary from that Asia, that, that China development bank that he was on the board of. But I was at a conference with him once not so many years ago where he talked of, in his capacity in that bank, going to meet Xi Jinping uh, with uh, Larry Summers. And you could see the Chinese, who are past masters at this, had won him through flattery. You know, he got an audience I with Xi Jinping. It. It's like a devout... Yeah, it's like a devout Catholic got, you know, the Pope said, well, what do you think about, what do you think I should do, you know? And Keating was just starstruck and so, you know, awestruck that he got to talk to Xi Jinping personally. And the Chinese are brilliant at flattering former leaders. They did the mm -hmm. same with Hawke and so on, but Hawke was never as silly as, uh, as, silly as Keating. And, uh, and then Keating... Almost everything that he said, well, no, not almost everything, but many, many things that he says these days are just not true. You can just uh, falsify so many statements he made at the last press club meeting. And, um, I know. you know, and yet now, I, his I think, you're onto something. think that he's still a great sage you're on you're history. Something. A Bankstown boy in Beijing. Suddenly, wow, I'm in the cockpit of the world. 